One final thing, no big deal. Um, just to make sure everyone's in the right place. If you're here, you're here for the Level Up series. And this particular one is travel hacks and how to pack a suitcase. So I hope we're all in the right place. And I'm so glad to have you here. Um, anyone planning a trip this spring or summer? Anyone? Yes? Okay. Well, even if you're not headed somewhere soon, this is going to be helpful. I absolutely promise. Um, just a little bit about me. So many of you have been here before and heard me speak, and some of you haven't, but let me reintroduce myself. I am Amy Bergman. I am a professional organizer. I grew up here in South Florida, so I am a proud native Floridian. Um, I went to UMass Amherst, I got a business degree, and I recently started my own business as a professional organizer, and I service all of Florida Hi. County. Hello and welcome. Look at this seat. Anywhere? Anywhere you'd like. All right. We're so glad that you are here. We were just starting. I don't want to... No worries. My if, if I sit here, you will see it. Perfect. Okay. always complain, so I don't want to be around here. Okay. <laughs> are we good, Larry? Yeah, for me it's good. Okay, great. Okay, so some people know what a professional organizer does and doesn't do. Some people think they know what they do. There's all different kinds of professional organizers, just like there's different types of doctors and lawyers who have different specialties and areas of expertise. So I like to think of myself as a problem solver. I am here to help my clients in their homes and in their offices. I help them declutter their lives and set up systems that work for them. I offer a very specialized service with my clients and quite often I go out into the community just like this and I speak on various topics related to organizing. There are professional organizers who specialize in working with those with ADD. There are organizers who work specially with the elderly. There are those who work with families. Um, so there's all different types and this is a little bit, hi, welcome, come on in, have a seat. A little bit about what I do um, in case you wanted to know. I love quotes and I love memes and I like to share them with you from time to time. Um, we live in a wonderful world that is full of beauty, charm, and adventure. There is no end to the adventures we can have if we only seek them with our eyes open. So I thought this was a great one as we're about to talk about travel tips and packing hacks. And this is a very broad topic. Welcome, so glad you're here. This is a really broad topic, travel hacks, right? Because there's all different kinds of travel. So when we first started, I asked you, how many of you are taking a trip this spring or summer, right? That's broad. I could say, how many of you will be traveling by car? How many of you will be traveling by plane? How many of you will be lucky enough to be on a cruise? <laughs> about what? A cruise, a boat, oh, not a cruise. ship. Those are all three various ways of traveling that require different preparation and different execution, right? So today I am attempting to cover a very broad topic and I beg your indulgence and I also ask for you to be a participant in this conversation because I can only give you 50, 60, 1,000 tips and you could probably give me 20 more that I don't know about, right? And we can all share with one another and learn from one another. There is also different ways of traveling. How many of you are traveling solo, alone this summer? or spring. Solo travel is very, very hot now. It's a hot thing to do. How many of you are traveling with an adult partner or spouse or someone like that? How many will be traveling with children or pets? Hi, how are you doing? So again, how you prepare for those kinds of trips vary, right? If you're traveling with your kids, it's very different than if you're packing to go by yourself with a spouse or a partner, correct? right? Yeah. What you pack is different, how you prepare, what you're going to need, what you have to be prepared for equals what you're bringing differently and how you're going to prep differently. So I say all of this to you because I want you to keep that in mind as I attempt in less than one hour to give you the best tips that I can possibly give, okay? Okay. I 
we'll be sharing lots of great ideas, tips, and resources with you this hour. Please, please, please do not feel obligated to write it down, grab your phone, take a picture of it, remember exactly what I say, because at the end of the day, if you just email me, I'm gonna send you this slide deck as a PDF, okay? So on your way out, I have a little gift for you. My business card is in the gift. Just email me and say, hey, Amy, can you send me the slides from your travel presentation and I will send them to you. That way, you can fully be present here with me right now and just listen. Hi, welcome. See, as I said, traveling with children. <laughs> All different hacks. And I bet this family is going to have some great ideas. Find a seat wherever you'd like. You can pull some extra chairs wherever you would like. Hi, welcome. No worries. This book by Keith Bradford is my first thing I'm going to tell you. Check out this book from here. Buy the book on Amazon or go somewhere and find this book. This book has really great hacks, really great ideas, really great. There's a lot of great books, but I like this one because it's very user friendly um, and it's not too dense. So please, 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 if you need to dive deeper into more things, because I'm only going to cover X amount of things today, that's the book to get. Okay? All right. So why do we plan? Why do we organize our trip? Why do we think about how to pack efficiently? Because it's going to make your trip better, right? It's going to make it less stressful. It's going to have you not waste time. From the second you start your trip, the clock is ticking, right? You took the five days off of work. You did all the things. The clock is ticking. You don't want to waste any time, no time. So my goal is to help you do all the stuff that we're gonna prepare so that when we're away, we are enjoying our time. Even if that's doing nothing but reading a magazine by the beach or somewhere like that, okay? Also, that reminds me, a trip that is a tropical destination is different than a trip that is a skiing destination, different than a theme park destination, different than a business trip. Again, how one would prepare for all those different types of trips is different. I could do a presentation on each one of those for an hour, right? So again, this will be kind of broad, but again, this book's a great Just have you can can we yes. take a picture with it open? Uh, okay, sure. Go right ahead. Okay, so no matter what we do and where we go, these are the things we're gonna talk about today, okay? We're gonna talk about how we're doing our research. We're gonna talk about how we're making a packing list. We're gonna talk about budget because I know that's not fun to talk about, but it's really important, really important. Because the better we are with our budget, then the more vacations we can take, right? We're gonna talk about budgeting, and then we're gonna talk about backup plans. The what if, right? There's always the what if, and the great thing about the backup plans and the what if this happens and oh my gosh, this is gonna happen, is that is what leads to great stories, right? It's quite often when you come back from the vacation, what are the stories? The things that didn't go as planned, okay? All right, great. Okay, research. We need to plan for our vacations. Maybe you've already started planning a vacation. Maybe you think you've done all the planning for your vacation already. I'm gonna give you a couple of my best tips for researching out your trip, no matter if it is the beach vacation, the family vacation, the solo vacation, whatever it might be. Okay, so obviously where are you going, right? Are you going to a major city? Are you going to a tropical destination? Are you going to a resort and you're never leaving the resort? Know where you're going, and then I know this sounds simple, but I can't tell you how many people don't go to that place's website. Are you going to San Francisco? San Francisco has its own website of all the great places to see and to do. Mm. Use their website. Mm. Are you going to a resort? Actually go to that resort's website. See what they recommend, see what they're promoting, see what um, options that they have if you're already staying there. That is always your best place to start, right? Instead of Googling what to do in San Francisco, mm -hmm. actually go to San Francisco's website. 
right? Or what to do at Bush Gardens Tampa. Go to Bush Gardens Tampa's website. I know it sounds so simple, but I can't tell you how many people don't do this really important first step. Yeah. It gives you ideas of what you think you might like to explore. You know yourself, are you a foodie, right? San Francisco, it's amazing food, right? There's 12,000 different foodie tours, wine tours, all of that, that they're gonna highlight for you and then you can take the next step and research each one of those, okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Okay. How are you traveling? How are you getting to your destination? And then what is going to be your mode of transportation when you're there? Are you just gonna walk everywhere? Are you gonna Uber places? Are you going to take public transportation? Do they have public transportation? How are you getting around? If you're staying at a hotel or resort, do they have shuttle services? What kinds of services do they offer when you're staying there? And we're gonna get into more of this, but mode of transportation, very important. Obviously, if you are flying somewhere, that's something you want to make the plans for at the beginning of your planning. Don't wait till the end to then book a flight, okay? Okay, my next big tip. Once you know where you're going, find a group, what that means. For example, I myself am going on a cruise. I am going on a cruise on a certain cruise ship. I'm going on a certain cruise ship the week of June whatever. Believe it or not, there is a Facebook group for the cruise line, that particular ship, that particular cruise that week. So everybody on the ship for the week of June whatever is joining this Facebook group. Why is this important? Why should I do this? Because everybody's talking. Does the ship have this? Is there a refrigerator in the room? What's it really like? Has anybody stayed in my room before? Do you have pictures of my room? Oh, sure, I'd love to share you. This is, I stayed in that exact room. This is what the room looks like. You would be shocked. You're staying at a resort, that resort has a Facebook group. Then there's friends of, people who have traveled to, people who are traveling. It is a great way to ask questions of like-minded people all traveling to the same place or who have recently been to that place and you get their best ideas and their hacks. So in the group for my cruise, people are saying, don't forget to pack magnet hooks from the dollar store because all the walls in a cruise ship are metal. And if you wanna hang up a wet swimsuit or your hats or whatever, you wanna bring magnetic everything. You wanna bring a magnetic shoe, shoe um, organizer to put all of your kids' stuffed animals and toys in to hang up on the wall because it's so limited closet space in a cruise ship room, in a cabin, right? So all of these are like, this is like the thing is you're in this group and you can always hop out of the group after your, your trip is over. It's not like a permanent decision and it's not you know, something you're committed to for life, right? So this is another great way before you even you know, go away. Yes, ma'am. Also, if you haven't read about it, yes. decorate your door because every cabin yes. is the same. Yes, all the door decorations in the cruise are very, very important to decorate your door. And so you may not know this if someone didn't tell you ahead of time and then you show up and you're like, oh, I would have known. I would have decorated the door. It's my husband's birthday or it's our anniversary cruise. I would have put something on our door, right? Because everybody decorates their door like it's a dorm room, like, like that kind of decor. Um, exactly, on a cruise ship. Okay, next. Let me ask you, there's yes. any privacy in, in Facebook? Because there's other person that doesn't travel, yes. but they can see your first thing, yes. your profile. Yes. There's no privacy, or there's privacy. Correct, there's that no is privacy. like, right. <laughs> that, is, that is something you have to think about. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. No, yeah. do okay, um, another, well maybe this is a better idea for you. Um, talk to friends and family who have traveled to your destination or on the same airlines or on the same cruise ship or the same pattern, yes sir? I'm thinking I can go to Facebook, but if you don't post anything, you can be private. You can yeah. see what's there without you interacting. Can, so yeah, they won't see your profile, mm -hmm. but you can interact. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, you can be private. You can be private, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, sir, that's Thank a very, you. yeah, good point. And that's on any of those um, social media, you can mark it private. Um, friends and family who have gone before, 
definitely take a poll. See what they liked, see what they didn't like. Um, do this research. It's really important because it could be that little thing that somebody mentions, like they may say, oh, that hotel does not provide beach chairs. And you may be traveling by car and you may say, I want to pay $20 a day to rent a lounge chair on the beach. I'm just gonna throw my beach chair in the back of my car and bring it with me, right? So maybe the hotel would have given you that information, but maybe you wouldn't have even thought to ask unless a friend or a family member mentioned it to you because the last time they went, it was something they wished they had with them. Okay, this is something I do no matter if I'm just traveling like an hour from my house, but around the 10 to 14 day mark before your trip, you can get a good indication of the weather where you're going. That is going to absolutely dictate what you're bringing. So start checking the weather this many days out. And once we get into packing, I'm gonna challenge you to start pulling your packing at that early. Uh, we're not waiting until day before to pack. That, those days are gone. If you're here, you're no longer doing that. I'm raising my right hand on my honor. I promise I am not pulling out everything to pack the night before. And then staying up until late, then you're being stressed, then you're not waking up fresh for your travel day, and you're starting off your vacation. And you forgot five things. And you forgot five things. We're going to get into packing lists in a second. We're going to use a list. We're going to plan ahead. We're gonna check the weather. Mm -hmm. Everybody say yes, we're checking yeah. the weather. Yes, we're checking the weather. Okay. Okay. Next, your phone is your friend. I have painstakingly gone through hundreds of apps for travelers. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. I chose five. There are many more than this. And just because I didn't choose them doesn't mean they're not good. But I chose five that function for five different things. Each one of these, there are literally hundreds that do the same thing. These are all apps that are free, that you can use for free. Um, some of them have paid versions, don't need to pay. If you want to upgrade and pay and get more features, that is on you. Um, but these are five that I love. And what I'm trying to do here is not so much give you these apps, but to get you thinking of, oh my God, I never knew that this was something that existed in the world that I should be looking for that would make my trip better, less stressful, and give me time back. Okay, you ready? Stick with me. It all makes sense. Okay. Packpoint. Packpoint is an app where you put in, where are you going, what are you doing, and it tells you what to pack. You're going to Bryce Canyon to see the national park. You are going to do a hiking trip. You're gonna ride the donkey down to the canyon one day, and then you have a resort day where you're gonna hang out with the kids and just get let them swim in and rest for a day. That app will tell you what to pack. Crazy, right? Never knew it existed, right? So if you're the kind of person who's like, Okay, great, Amy, I wanna make a packing list, but I really don't even know where to start or what to bring. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm supposed to do when I'm there. I'm going to a wedding, right? I also have a family dinner one night. I'm also going to the outlet malls to go shopping one day, whatever. You know where you're going and what you're doing, but you're just not sure what to bring. This is an app that will help you. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Somebody's thinking. Anybody know about Happy Cow? I'm about to blow your mind. Okay, happy cow. Are you traveling with or you yourself have dietary restrictions, right? You're a vegan and you're going to Atlanta. You've never been to Atlanta and you're like, where are all the vegan restaurants? Or I have a friend who has celiacs and where can she eat or whatever it might be. Happy cow. You put in, you know, you can literally go into the app, it reads your location, and it tells you in your area where are the places that, given your restrictions or your spouse or your family, where you can go to eat. Totally cool. And from there, listen to this, from Happy Cow, you can then just use your location to have like, 
an Uber come and pick you up and take you to that restaurant, or you can walk. If you're walking, like in a town or a city, like if you're in New York, and let's say, you know, whatever it might be, okay? You need to touch before the screen goes away. Touch your mouth. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, Bob. Okay. Anybody know about this one? Yeah. For, for the TV. What do I have to do? The, uh -huh. the TV. The remote control. Oh, the remote control. Oh, dear. Okay. Okay, thank you all very much. <laughs> okay, so this next one, um, VA tour, helps you with excursions. Okay. So you know that you want to go to Bryce Canyon. Again, you want to learn about what are the best hiking excursions to do with a family or with not or where you can go and take a helicopter tour of the canyons, whatever it might be, this app is all about excursions. What's great about this, and which is different than if you ask your hotel where you're staying or your resort, is they have no affiliation to anything. They're gonna give you a broad selection because they have no vested interest of what you choose. Okay, so this is like, it just you can do both, right? You can kind of cross-reference cross and cross-check. So this is a really great app. Flight Aware, has anyone about Flight? Mm -hmm. Flight Aware seems to be like pretty common. Yeah. Okay. Um, this this is really cool, especially if you're traveling with kids. Yeah. It will tell you where your plane is. <laughs> it literally will tell you um, what type of plane you're flying and where it is. That it hasn't made the connection from one city to the other. Um, that it's on its way. What kind of aircraft it is. How many seats are in the aircraft. This is like just fun kind of stuff if you're traveling and also to know how long you have to get to your gate because sometimes the airline is telling you what time they're boarding, but then you get to the gate and then you find out the plane's not there for another two hours. So this is a, a great app so you can see where is my plane and know what kind of aircraft it is. So just, it's a great app. I, I, love, I love using it and it's fun for kids because it kind of shows you where it is. Yeah. Can you this one? You, you need to put a flight number yes. and everything. Yes, yes, okay. thank you ma'am. Yeah, you would put in United Flight 1028. Um, nanny bag. Do you know about nanny bag? No, I don't. This is so cool, and I actually wish I knew about this. We are going on a trip, and we have a whole day where our flight isn't until 9 o'clock at night, but we're in a city, but we don't want to travel with our luggage all over the city to do exploring before we have to go to the airport late at night. What do you do with your bags? So we were like, well, should we call the hotel where we stayed the week prior and see if they'll hold our bags for a fee so we could walk around. Nanny bag. Ready? Where to store your luggage when you're visiting a city for the day. It will tell you in any given city, you literally put in the zip code, where you're going, who will hold on to your bag. There may be a fee or not, but that way you don't feel like you have to schlep your luggage all over with yourself while you're trying to explore a city and you're not leaving until later. Isn't that cool? Someone so thought of that? Brilliant. Right. Okay. I think um, also you should know I will email this to you. Yeah. So you don't have to feel. Oh, you email? Yes. At the end of the um, session, if you just take my business card and send me a note, I will email all of this. So, what is your uh, uh, email address? It's, it's, at, it's over here for you on the way out. Okay. In the way out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So, these are the apps. There are so many more. Um, but I think if nothing else, start here, right? And as you play around in these apps, you may find other apps that you love too. Um, but these are five I love, okay? They kind of cover a little bit of everything, a little bit of flight, a little bit of food, a little bit of travel. Um, okay. Question, what, yeah. what, um, what app do you recommend to search for flights? Okay, so I'm old school. I use the um, carrier of choice. So if I was a Delta person, I'm going to Delta. So I don't use like Expedia, like you could use all of those yeah. that yeah. curate all the different yeah. flights. Yeah. Okay. Um, but how do you know what, what do you city use? goes to, what, what do you use? I, I literally use
use the airline that I would use. So how do you find out if JetBlue flies there? I literally will Google, does JetBlue go to San Francisco? If they don't, I say, what airlines go to San Francisco? And it says staff, it will say, Delta, American, United, and I pick my favorite, and then I go to their website and I book the flight directly with the, the airline. Right. I don't like going through a middle person. I know that a lot of people swear by it, and it's cheaper. Yes, sir. I think what you've outlined is interesting, uh -huh. that if you have time mm -hmm. for direct flight considerations, mm -hmm. yes. all of the airlines mm -hmm. aggregate it, give you the ability to make those judgments. Uh, just going to your end. I, mean, I do what you do. Yeah. I have a preferred airline for various yes. reasons, but right. yeah. I found Expedia very helpful. Yes. It, it, it doesn't work where I am. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So I know. I just, I really would love to give you a different answer, but there are people who swear by certain ones and know how to work, work them to get the best deal. Um, but I also have points with certain airlines. So some people like to only fly what they're going to get their points on. Some people have the credit card with the airlines and they want to make sure that they get money back. So the best way to do that. Question. Traveling insurance, can you buy to Expedia or have to do to a major the, uh, carrier? Okay, so travel insurance, um, you can do different ways. If you're booking a flight and you're flying to your destination, you do that right there when you're booking the flight in, in that airline. If you're booking a cruise or you're booking a different kind of, of travel, if you are using a travel agent, okay. that travel agent can help you get insurance for the entire trip. So that would cover if you were flying to somewhere, then getting on a cruise, then also having hotel, then also having, it would cover the entire trip. Did you know that typically there is not a fee to use a travel agent? Mm -hmm. You as the person traveling are not paying for that travel agent at all. They're getting paid via the cruise line, the airlines, or whatever. They're getting paid from a different entity, okay? So I say this too, I know that in this crazy world we've all gotten away from using travel agents. There is a benefit. They often can get you deals. They often know of certain things and can help you plan. Um, now. Some travel agents, if they are the ones putting together an entire package for you and you're having them do a lot different legwork, there may be a slight fee, but by and large, there is not. So think, think about that a little bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about the trip itself. Um, the best laid plans that mice and men often go awry. So there are things that happen when we travel and we have to just say they're going to happen. Right? Because if you let them get you upset, you're just gonna let it ruin your time. And we don't wanna do that, right? We're gonna turn lemons into lemonade. Okay, how are we gonna do that? We're gonna start by creating a really good packing list, right? Because we're checking the weather. Maybe we're using the packing app to put in all the fun activities that we're gonna do and get their suggestions on what not to forget, right? So if you're taking that trip to Alaska and you're going on that excursion to see the glaciers, you want waterproof pants. You're not, you're not traveling in your jeans or your, or, your, or your leggings, right? But you may not have thought of that or know of that if you didn't like put that into that app or ask somebody else, right? Okay, so overpacking and underpacking are both <coughs> problems when we travel. So we don't want to do either one of those things. We want to get it just right. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to help you pack well. This is just an example of the packing list. What's interesting to me is there are packing lists already made up for free all over the internet. You could literally Google packing list for tropical vacation, packing list for Alaska adventure, and somebody somewhere has created a packing list. And it will give you a starting point. And you may look at it and go, okay, fine, I'm going to New York, but like, I'm not going to a show. I'm not going to a concert, so I don't need these things. You know, but at least it's a starting point um, to, to really think about your packing list. But we're using a list, okay? That's the point. Actually, we are making a list. 
sometimes it's easier to make your list day by day of what you know you're doing on your vacation. Even if you're not sure what you're doing that day, literally write it out. You're leaving on a Thursday, you're coming home on a Monday, right? Thursday, you're traveling in your travel outfit, okay? What are you traveling in? And you are traveling in your heaviest and biggest and bulkiest, whatever it is, because we're gonna get to that, right? If you need sneakers for any time that you're away, you're wearing the sneakers on your travel day so it doesn't have to go in your suitcase, okay? If you are ever going to need a jacket while you're away, you're wearing that jacket on your travel day so it doesn't have to go in your suitcase, okay? It's on your person. So you're gonna write down each day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then literally what are we gonna need each one of those days? This is a great way to create the packing list because if you need underwear every day, because we do, <laughs> then you know you're going to need Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then as my mom says, plus two. You should never know, right? With the underwear, plus two. Um, so this will help you if you think of it day by day, or you can think of it activity by activity. Some people like to create their packing list of, oh, this day we're going horseback riding, I definitely need long pants, I definitely need closed toe shoes, and that's what creates their packing list. So these are just, it, it depends on how you like to say. Okay, we are going to account for those unseen issues or change in plans. Beyond the two extra pair of underwear, right? It could rain, right? Are we bringing a small travel umbrella just in case? Chances are if you pack it, you won't need it, right? So just in case, are you um, thinking it could rain and now that day that we were going to be touring downtown New York, we have to move ourselves inside to a museum, right? So should I bring an extra sweatshirt in case it's cold inside, right? So don't just think of the activities you think you're going to do. Pack a couple of things for the unforeseen situations, right? So another situation could be you planned a fun activity with your kids and you were going to be doing, I, I don't know, um, some kind of art project or whatever and now they've gotten it all over the clothes for that day and you thought that was the outfit they were also wearing out to dinner. So maybe you should pack one extra outfit just in case somebody gets messed up because the activities you have planned are not necessarily neat and clean and maybe somebody will get dirty. You just don't know. So as much as I don't want you to overpack, right, you still want to be prepared. Okay, it's a fine line. Start early. We talked about this. We're not doing the night before. We're backing it up. I like to start pulling my clothes. And this way also, you're making sure that the stuff is clean. We're not doing laundry the day before. Everything that you want to start packing is already clean. Clean. So I like to like just make piles on the floor in the bedroom you know, 10 days out, start pulling that stuff and pack and pack, soft packing that way. Okay, um, consider limitation and restraints. Um, you wanna consider how many bags do you get or not get in your travel if you're traveling by plane? Do they let you take one and the rest is you have to pay $50 a bag? Like, what is the cost ratio on that, right? So do I wanna pay the extra money to have another bag? Do I wanna be in charge of another bag? Am I bringing kids and I have a, a kid in tow and a bag, like who's pulling the third bag? You know, so think about your limitations on what you can actually bring. If you're traveling by car, heck, fill your car, right? Um, which is an overpacking situation, I know, but you have more choices there. So know the limitations and restraints. Sometimes you're limited into how much you can actually bring on a trip and what you can bring on a trip. Please, please, please remember that TSA is going to take that big bottle of lotion. You can only bring the three ounces. You know, know these things, especially if you haven't traveled in a while. There are a lot of people who haven't traveled in a really long time, and quite honestly, things are different now. And um, what you can and can't bring, even on the train, um, if you're taking, I mean, I know we don't do a lot of train here, but let's say you're going up to the Northeast and then you're gonna travel by train. There are restrictions for what you can bring on Amtrak and what you can't and what can be on your person and what can be on in your luggage. So just go on those websites and know, know all of this. It's just important to do because again, you're gonna get stopped. You're gonna have an issue. 
you're going to waste valuable time, right? And happiness and it's vacation. And yes. Okay. Okay. Speaking of hand carry, what are you actually packing? That's either going in the back of the car, going on the airplane versus what's going to be on your person. What's your carry on? What do you need with you? Number one, you are never packing medicines in luggage that's being checked or luggage that's leaving your site. Your medications stay with you, right? I would also argue that if you are traveling with jewelry of any value, which I don't suggest, but if you are, that stays with you, right? Your wallet stays with you, your ID stays with you, your money stays with you. Anything critical to your children's health and well being stays with you. You always want to make sure that you have some kind of food. Make sure there's no restrictions on bringing food however you're traveling. Um, same thing with water. You cannot bring bottles of water on the plane, but you can bring an empty water bottle that you can then fill right at the gate before you get on the plane, right? So think of these things um, and what is going to stay on you versus what's going in the luggage, right? Have a separate list. So the packing list, you're going to have another little list of just what I'm hand carrying. And that's the last minute stuff. You know, before you, you leave that morning, that's the hand carry. Okay. Budget. Okay. Let's talk about money, 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 um, because that's how we can afford to go away. Um, you're going to budget for your transportation. Not just how are you getting to your destination, all of the transportation you will need while you're there. Are you Ubering? Are you taking a taxi? Are you taking public transportation? Mm -hmm. These all have a cost. And you need to remember that because everybody budgets for their flight or their even for their gas when they're driving somewhere, but they don't think about all these other transportation related costs. So you don't wanna be feeling like at the end of the vacation you spent so much more than you thought it was gonna cost you. You know, be planful. Okay, lodging. Again, you're using Expedia and it says, oh, we can get you this Hilton for 159 a night. It's not 159 a night. It's $159 a night, plus, 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 plus. Especially if you're traveling to somewhere like Florida, there's a tax for this and a tax for that and a visitor's this. So know the real cost for where you're staying. It's really important. Airbnb, same thing. You know, Just really know all of the costs. Is there a deposit fee on that Airbnb? It, do you get it back? All of those things. Food and drink, obviously. Um, I always say bring empty water bottles. There is no reason to pay for water anywhere, anywhere. No reason. I mean, I was at Disney last week. I didn't pay for water. I brought an empty water bottle, and they have the fill stations all over. And literally, there was an app. Where is there a fill station near me? <laughs> Just saying. Okay. Um, what are you doing when you're there? Sometimes you're prepaying for your excursion, so you have a true cost of how much that activity for that day is, but there's other things. There's always a souvenir shop, right? There's always, you're gonna to wanna to tip out your guide. Think about these things as part of your budget, okay? Um, I used to travel a lot as a kid. We had a camper, we, we went camping. And um, souvenirs were on us as kids. So we would save our pennies, our nickels, our dimes in a little piggy bank. And that was what we used to buy whatever souvenirs we, we wanted whenever we were somewhere. Um, but they do add up um, the souvenirs, so budget for them. Just give yourself a budget. It will be helpful. Okay. Backup plans. Um, as I said, this may be your intention. We're going to go see the Statue of Liberty, right, on the Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Thank you, ladies. We're, take a gift on the way out. Thank We're going to go so see the Statue of Liberty at 1 o'clock on Tuesday, right? But then what happens, Tuesday is not a good weather day right? So you end up here. Okay, so what's near the Statue of Liberty? What can we do in the same amount of time, right? And what would also be something enjoyable? So flexibility is what I'm really saying. Don't be so rigid in your vacation planning that there's not room to like make some quick decisions. Um, so we want to make sure that we have backup plans for everything. Okay. This is going back to my organizing head and my decluttering mind. So instead of filling our lives with more things,
means we're going to fill them with experiences like traveling and going to new places and being with family and friends for adventures right so when you are choosing and just by being here today you've already like consciously made the choice that travel is important to you and it's where you want to put your time and money so just by doing that you're choosing the experiences right because things are just things to me it's just how i am okay so okay so now we're going to talk about packing a bag and i'm going to give you some suitcase tips and then i'm going to show you over there you don't have to get up i can do it from over there i'm going to show you in real life what how some of what i'm going to tell you plays out if that makes sense it'll all make sense in the end okay all right so i am going to demonstrate how file folding or rolling your clothing maximizes your suitcase space many of you may have already known about this versus folding and stacking your clothes there's something called file folding, which I'm going to show you, or rolling, okay? That's one strategy. Um, we talked about hand carry versus checked. I'm gonna go over that a little bit with you. Um, shoe placement, um, shoe placement's really important because shoes are typically the bulkiest thing you're bringing on a trip. If you can narrow it down, especially for women, because you guys have it easy, but especially for women, if you can narrow it down, I'm gonna talk about how, to one pair of athletic, one pair of dressy, and like, if you can, it can be done, I promise. If, if you can, figure out just to limit yourself to three pairs of shoes, it's a world of difference, and it's the difference between checking luggage and not checking luggage sometimes. And I know it depends on the duration of your trip. <coughs> what I'm showing you is something for a typical five-day trip, believe it or not, all in a carry-on. So, ah, I know, woohoo! Um, so we're, we're gonna talk about shoe placement. Again, always wearing your bulkiest shoes on your travel day. So if you are going on an adventure and you know you're gonna need hiking shoes, wear those shoes on your travel day because that's your bulkiest thing is gonna take up room in your suitcase. Unless you already know you're packing three bags, you're paying for three bags and it doesn't matter. I'm trying to give you maximizing and keeping your costs down. Um, what to wear when to travel, like I said, wear your jacket if you're gonna need a jacket, wear your bulkiest shoes, um, you know, bring as much on your personal body as possible. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you some tips for how to travel with belts and jewelry that I love. Um, you know, lots of times those are things that kind of like take up space or with the jewelry, quite often jewelry is just a pain in the neck to travel with because it always gets tangled and I have a really great hack I'm gonna share with you. And then I'm gonna show you packing cubes and compression cubes, two different things, okay? A packing cube is a zipper compartment, I have some here, where you can either take that day's outfit or all of your underwear, socks, and bras, or all of little Johnny's outfits and little Jane's outfits, and separate them into cubes that zipper. And that way, the packing, you see right away in your suitcase, oh, this is my husband's socks all in one little zipper compartment. Packing cubes are great because they help separate within the suitcase. Different than a compression cube. A compression cube actually sucks the air out of whatever's in it. Kind of like if you took a Ziploc bag and sucked all the air out of it and compressed it down. It helps create space in your suitcase because you're compressing your clothing. There are compression cubes that kind of use a vacuum to suck out the air. But then the problem is, is you're at your destination. You need the vacuum on the way home to get the air out. So I don't like those. The ones I brought, you actually compress the air out by rolling it and it takes all the air out. So I'm gonna show you those um, because as much as I'm not trying to have you spend money, these are tools that you may wanna invest in. They're not expensive. You can get them inexpensively on Amazon or Walmart. Yes, ma'am. Is these cubes take more space on your suitcase? You're gonna see, I have them here. So you're gonna feel and touch them. 
okay? So we're going to look at it together, okay? And you can make that decision. I don't, I don't think they take up more space. Um, it just kind of, for me, it's more of what kind of trip I'm going on. If I don't care as much about on the other end what my clothes look like, I feel like there's a wrinkle factor. I always bring a three ounce spray thing, or the wrinkle release um, with me when I travel. It's a spray on stuff so you don't have to iron because you don't always have an iron. Um, but that's more of the factor for me than the space, but you're gonna look at it. You're gonna touch and feel, okay? All right, so, okay, so let's do it. Okay, all right, so, let me just show you. I'm, I'm gonna bring it up there. I just kind of laid it out. Okay. So this is a carry-on suitcase. I think the only airline that would not take these dimensions is Frontier. They have wicked small restrictions. Spirit airline. Spirit, and maybe Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. God bless them. Okay. But okay, small suitcase. I, I mean, I had I had to have something to kind of to kind of start start it out. This always lives in my suitcase, something like this, okay? Because this is what I'm gonna use to put all my dirty clothes in while I'm traveling. After I wear an outfit or something is not wearable again, I'm gonna put it in here. So when I pack to come home, I know that this goes right into my laundry room. Okay, this costs me nothing. Just get a plastic bag. You can buy a fancy laundry bag and put it in there, but. You don't need to. Okay, so this is always in my bag. Um, is there anything else? Oh, just, I just want to double check before I, oh, there's shoes in here. Okay. Okay. So, again, I already talked about this, but traveling to a tropical destination versus skiing versus, like, I'm trying to cover everything, so I have a little of everything in this suitcase. Okay? But here's the, the best tip I can give you about packing. If you can keep all of your outfits, daytime, nighttime, you know, uh, everything you're doing, all your activities, if you can keep it all in this same hue, mm -hmm. right? Mix and match. Does anybody remember Granimals? Yes. When we were kids, Granimals, everything matched with everything else. If you can keep pieces that all work with each other, you're going to get a lot more outfits out of your clothing. So what we don't want to do is do day one, here's the top and bottom. And then once you wear that top and bottom, even if they're not dirty, dirty, you didn't sweat, you, but they don't match anything else for the rest of the trip. That's not smart. We're gonna see smart, let me show you. So I'm traveling, and on my travel, I'm bringing my bulkiest clothes. I have this black blazer, and I'm going in a pair of of jeans and I'm gonna wear my bulky tennis sneakers on the plane with a t-shirt underneath. Day two, three, four, I go out to dinner, I can throw this jacket on over two other outfits to dress them up a little bit, right? And this is not even going in my suitcase. These jeans I can re-wear daytime, nighttime with different tops, any top. And so these jeans, really, you know, you don't need to wash jeans very often, do you know that? Do you know Anderson Cooper wears his jeans for like nine months? <laughs> well, I'm just saying that because his mother's Gloria Vanderbilt, she basically invented jeans. Did you know that fact? Yeah. Yeah, he said it multiple times. He says, you don't need to wash your jeans. But this is what I'm wearing travel day, right? My bulky jacket that I can rewear different outfits. You're going to see black, denim, basic. Yes, ma'am. Also, for the sake of pictures, you could change your top and repeat the bottom yes. the entire trip. Yes, a hundred times. So now... Here is, I had the, the sneakers I was wearing on travel day. I now have one pair of flats that I can wear, again, with the jeans or anything else. So here's a, black, a blouse, okay, short sleeve blouse. Can go with those jeans, can go with the black leggings that I also am going to pack, can go with the blazer or not go with the blazer. I could also wear this with denim shorts that I'm also going to pack. So let me show you. Here are black leggings, which can go with this blouse. I'm gonna go with two other things I'm gonna show you. Denim shorts that can go with that top or any other t-shirt that I brought. 
with the sneakers that I wore on my travel day. Okay, so these are all outfits interchangeable. Okay. White t-shirt, black t-shirt. White t-shirt goes with anything. It can go underneath the blazer, it can go with those shorts, it can go with the leggings, it can go with the jeans by itself. It's just a black short sleeve t-shirt. A white, this is the black little dress here. It can go under the blazer, it can go by itself. It's all interchangeable, right? Then, you always have to have a little sweater, as my mother says. Have a little sweater. The little sweater can go over a t-shirt for layering, under the blazer for a third layer in case you're chilly or cold, can go with the black leggings, can go with the jeans, really and truly. It could even be worn just over the shoulder, right? Always just have a sweater. And this, you can wear two or three different times. Everything, you can wear two or three different times. It's another outfit. Then I have another pair of shorts, because this is five days, right? So I have the denim shorts, which we can rewear a number of times, just like the jeans, right? Because Anderson Cooper said it's okay. So we're gonna wear the denim shorts more than once. And then we have a little nicer pair of shorts, let's say. Bermuda shorts, right? Here is yet another tank top. So now we have a black tank top. We have the black short sleeve, black tank top, sweater can go over this, anything you want, right? This is actually an athletic top that can go with athletic pants. Maybe we're going for a run, maybe you want to work out in the hotel gym. So you're going to bring a pair of athletic pants to do something active, right? Maybe you rewear these once or twice, maybe you don't. So you have athletic bottoms and an athletic top, right? To go to the hotel gym, to go out for a walk, Athletic, one athletic outfit. You can only wear, you can only wear one because if you go to yeah, you like more than one, right. you don't have to So maybe you pack two. Maybe you pack two or three. You only have to one. Sure. I am accounting for, yeah, on our five day trip, two pairs of pajamas. Maybe you change your pajamas every day. Literally, you don't have to, especially if you shower before you go to sleep. I'm going to call it. We can bring two pairs of pajamas for a five day trip, okay? <laughs> you bring more? Yes. This is the just in case what happens, I need one extra shirt. Okay, one extra t-shirt. In black again. Okay. And because we might be going tropical, here's a swimsuit. Again, black, right? Can be worn under the denim shorts with the white t-shirt, one cover-up. This cover-up can also be a dress or a skirt. Okay? You have a day at the beach, you're gonna go grab some conch fritters at an outdoor restaurant. You put this on, you tie this around your neck, you do the cute thing that you find online. Now you have a dress and the third pair of shoes are flip flops. Okay, these are also great because these are what you're gonna to bring to wear in the shower in case where you're staying, you don't feel comfortable being barefoot in your shower. Okay, heels go right in there. Okay, so a swimsuit. Cover up, it's also a dress, it's also a skirt. You put the black tank top with the skirt. Really cute outfit with these, right? Cute outfits, okay. I'm throwing in some socks of course. to wear with the sneakers. I did, because we're not gonna wear the sneakers every day, but let's say three or four pairs of socks. And I'm bringing one pair of dressy black pants that can go with the blazer and one of the tops. And these are a little bit dressier, right? And they can go with the cute, cute flats, and now you have a dressier outfit going out to dinner. These can definitely be reworn. And what's great about these is these are really wrinkle free. Mm -hmm. So you wanna find something that you know is gonna look good on the other end, or maybe your hotel has an iron. You know, you never know. Okay, here's a belt. I know, you know, I only need one belt because it's black and everything yeah. that I brought goes with this. The jeans, the jean shorts, the other shorts, this will go because it's all in the same color family. It doesn't have to be black, white, and denim. Maybe you're a colorful person and you look really great. You're a winter, spring, summer fall. I don't know. Maybe you look great in blues and now you have a lot of blues. Just make sure it all kind of works together so that you can mix and match it up. I like to take my belts. Um, I didn't bring the sneakers with me, but I like to pack it in the shoe. 
Okay, so belt in your shoes is how you maximize space, like such. And let me show you now. <clears throat> I love um, when you pack your toiletries, and most people hand carry their toiletries because what if your luggage doesn't make it, okay? If your luggage doesn't make it to the other end where you are, you may be in delay of having your luggage. So nothing in your luggage should be critical. Maybe you would wanna hand carry one pair of underwear and one fresh shirt, just in case you don't have your luggage for a day or two or three or four. I always travel with my toiletries, my toothbrush, my toothpaste, my medicines, my cosmetics, because those I can't live with. It, you know, like I could replace them if there was a CVS or a Walgreens, but depending on where you're going, maybe that's not possible. So I like toiletry cases. I like the ones that hang and don't go on the countertop because nine times out of 10, wherever you are going, a hotel, a cruise, whatever, there's very little countertop and you, this is easier to hang on the back of the door. So then let me show you my next travel hack. And there are two options. This is a travel case for jewelry. And what I love about it is it has individual compartments. So you could put literally one pair of hoop earrings, all of your rings, all of your bracelets, and they don't intermingle and it all folds up into this. Okay, it's not expensive. Or if you travel with necklaces, Use a straw. <laughs> Put your necklaces through a straw like this and they won't get tangled. See, I just took some necklaces from my house. This is like a bendy straw, you know. Just use a straw and then you can put these in wherever. They're not gonna get tangled with each other, I promise. I do this all the time. They stay individual, okay? So use a straw for your necklaces um, and consider something like this for, you can look at this afterwards, uh, for your jewelry that's gonna keep separate all Amazon of your little jewelry. Where did you get that? Huh? Um, Amazon. <laughs> and, and you call it jewelry box. Jewelry case. case. You'll take a picture of it. Do you guys know how to use Google Images? Word and word. You can take a picture of anything and Google Images will tell you who sells it. Did you know? It's really it's awesome. Okay, so this we're, I'm going to show you now. Let me show you. I'm going to show you. This all fits, and we're going to go through file folding and all of that. Well, I saw that one. I was looking for something, but I didn't see that one. The next big category for me when I travel, and this is just me, but it might be you, especially when you're traveling with kids. It's all about the electronics. There are so many cords and bugs and things. This is a good investment, okay? So this has compartments for all of the earbuds. Remember if you're flying, the earbuds for your phone, your app iPhone, do not work on the airplanes. You need the one that has the this, the this end, right? probably the only time you're going to use these, but you have to have them, right? So <coughs> all Are of- you this? Yeah. Do you have them? Yeah, yeah. This kind of end. It's a, called a male end. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, for, 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 the, for the plane. Also, a portable charger is really critical because your phone is going to die. You're going to want to take pictures. You're going to want to be on your phone using all the wonderful apps I told you about. So invest in a good, portable charger. So, yeah. That's what's safer. Yes. Than charging yes. your phone anywhere. Right, especially in an airport. Um, I love this. So this block goes into the wall and then it gives you two charging ports. So maybe you're staying somewhere there's only one and there's four of you. Um, so this is a good thing to travel with as well. And then my favorite of all favorites we're all going to buy an air tag. We're going to buy an air tag to put in the luggage for when the luggage goes astray. An air tag. They're $29. I know it sounds like a lot. This will track your luggage. Mm -hmm. Okay. It can also 
go in, there's an insert for the shoe. You know about this? Yeah, okay. There is a um, shoe insert where this goes, and so you can track your children. If you're somewhere and you feel like nervous about maybe your children will go, you know, run after Mickey Mouse down, down the causeway. Um, air tags, yes, your luggage may not get lost, but can I tell you the other great thing about air tags? It tells you where your luggage is. You get off the plane, you're rushing to baggage claim, right? You gotta get to baggage claim. You have to go to the bathroom. You possibly need to fill your water bottle, but you're racing to get to baggage claim because you're worried that your bag is gonna be on the conveyor belt. If you have this, you can look on your phone and see your bag hasn't left the plane yet. You've gotten off the gate, you're already in the terminal, but your bag is still on the plane. They haven't unloaded it yet. You have plenty of time, go to the bathroom. Does that work with an app? Yeah, it, mm -hmm. with your Apple phone. Yeah, it literally tracks tracks it. You can put this in anything. Probably on Android, I think you need to download something. Yes, but there is. But it's compatible, I don't know. But it has to be downloaded on the phone. Yeah, yeah but this is like a really great tool because I just like <clears throat> to follow my luggage to see when it's going to be wherever it's going to be. Um, so I highly recommend air tags. Just you just slip it in the luggage and you forget about it. That's it. And then when you get to your destination, you pull up. You know, but if your luggage gets lost and the airlines, we all know where your baggage. You're like, yeah, I know where it is. It's in Zurich. So how will you show that thing when your luggage is lost? You have to go in, on your on, phone. On your phone. On your phone. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It will say, find my luggage. It actually. Where did you buy all those accessories? This is from the Apple Store, but you can get oh, them on Apple Amazon store. as well. They sell a three. How much was the three pack? It was a four pack. Was like four seventy pack. bucks or something. Yeah, four like pack was seventy. Yeah. I know it's it sounds, but it's wonderful. I mean, for so many reasons and so many uses, you'll come up with more uses, but mm -hmm. we, we, we like we like these. Okay, so having something, now you don't need to buy a fancy storage thing for your electronics, but to have your electronics in something, even a Ziploc, is helpful because you don't want to be fumbling while you're traveling looking for all of your chargers and cords. Always remember that when you stay somewhere, nine times out of 10, the plug is never where you want it to be. Um, certain certain travel will not allow you to bring power strips. On a cruise, no power strips are allowed, okay? You're allowed something like what I showed you that plugs into the wall and has various cubes, but you're not allowed to bring. They will confiscate it, okay? So the number one thing confiscated on cruise ships is the power strips, because they go through your luggage. You say power strip? A power strip. Um, and is there one here? I don't know if there, the thing that, that plugs in all the plugs, it goes into the wall. You can't, you can't use those on cruise ships. Okay, these are your packing cubes that you were talking about. So a packing cube, it's a set. And these actually, they say compressed down, but it's a zipper, it's a little bit different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. So there's, I thought this was a set of three. Maybe I used this one. But this, is, you have these. Okay. So the, the thought process is you would put all of something, like right, you put all, all of your t-shirts, right, like this. I'm showing over here, I'm coming show and tell, hi. So this is what these look like. You can get them in any color of the rainbow. Okay, so you, you would then take, and I didn't bring underwear with me today because I don't like those. <laughs> um, but you would take one category of something, and you put it in. Now these, this one here actually has like a compression downward. But, and then this would go in your suitcase, okay? So this is different than these. I'll show you. Okay? So this is a roll and pack compression situation. So for these, these are almost like big ziploc -y things. But I'm going to show you. Remember we talked about rolling and file folding? I'm going to show you that. But you would use these. And there's different sizes. So this is the little, this is the big. Okay? So you're going to put your clothes in these. And then you're going to roll it to get the air out and, and zipper it shut to keep the air out. That's good for the dirty clothes too. Yeah, and this is also good for dirty clothes to just take empties with you. Okay, so these are a little bit different, but let me show you what I am talking about. If this, if this will keep your clothes uh, on the way, 
that's my thing. Oh. I feel you buy a wrinkle free stuff for free. I, I feel like they're like great them. because they save you the space, but then when I open it, I often feel like my stuff is a little wrinkled. So I bring the wrinkle release, which I didn't I thought I had it in here and I didn't. I'm sorry. It's a little squirty bottle. It has to be the three in, the three ounces. Um you, you spritz it and wrinkles out or put it in the shower while you're showering in the hot steam Just water. Bring a, bring a mini steamer. A Mi mini steamer right. is like this from here to here. You, you can bring a steamer unless you're going on a cruise. And, and, and then no steamers or irons are allowed on cruises. No, mm -hmm. So um, but most places you go, they have iron and stuff. Or like that, you, know, you just wear the clothes wrinkled. The best way I can find clothes is not wearing the whole outfit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I said, in this cube, I would put socks and underwear. I didn't bring the underwear, but could you just pretend? Okay. You know, and, and then you could do like this. So here's, this I'm going to wheel this around. So you see what's, what's how easy. See how easy? But I, there's so much more. I'm just showing you that this is the process. Then you, when you open this in your destination, hi, I'm in my hotel. I'm only there for one night. Here are the pajamas for tonight and the outfit for tomorrow. You don't have to go through everything. And do you recommend if you're saying, I don't know, five days in a hotel, you say to go take oh, yeah. everything out I of do. the uniform? I do. Um, you know, I could go either way on that. There are, I don't love to live out of a suitcase if it's more than two nights. Um, I will take everything out. It is a sticky wicket because you want to make sure that everything you take out, you put back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these things all the time. I, um, I would suggest them. one drawer per family member. This is this is Sarah's drawer. This is Jim's drawer, so that you kind of keep track of your stuff. Don't cross pollinate, maybe. <laughs> that way you avoid. You, right. So a lot of my stuff when we travel is hanging. So I like to immediately get out the stuff that I want to hang out a little bit and have it hang. Um, again, it's so dependent upon, if I was in an Airbnb and the Airbnb didn't really have like closets and it's all drawers, I may rethink it. Um, it really depends on where you're staying. But if you're going on a typical vacation hotel, you know, unpack, put the suitcases away, you know, and enjoy your vacation. Um, it is helpful to be able to really see in a closet hung up your, your hanging stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I, I get it. I totally get it. I'm going to show you how this is all fitting. Hold on one second so that you will believe me. When I say to you, this is what we're taking. And I'm even packing my travel outfit. I do. Hold on one second. Are the shoes on the bottom? Mm -hmm. Shoes are on the bottom, and a pair of shoes are in here, and I'm wearing the third pair. Pretend these are my big, bulky sneakers. How many pairs of shoes you take in? This is sneakers great. and two, but you wear it. And if I'm you wearing one, play, and I packed two. I mean, you can do whatever you want. I mean, but, yeah. you know, it just kind of depends. So, I just chose stuff that goes with my outfit. This case goes to the top compartment of the aeroplane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This goes to the top. Now, I still, on most airlines, get one, like, purse or personal item. I choose a backpack always with my electronics, with my toiletries, with my medicine, my wallet, my ID. That is with you. With me. 100% with me. Um, what about purse? That instead of a purse, I bring a backpack. Sometimes I'll pack a little purse to switch out for when I travel, so I don't have to carry my big backpack or I'll put it you know, right in. But I bring, um, I didn't bring it with me today. I just had so much to bring. <laughs> I, um, my personal item, so this would be my carry-on, like you said, above. My personal item, I choose a backpack. Um, I put my empty water bottle in the side pocket. That's my empty water bottle for my whole trip. My medicines, my toiletries, my makeup, my travel information, my ID, my wallet, um, and my electronics, and my jewelry go with me on the plane. Um, so that's that's what I have. But um, but just in case yes. you don't want to put your toiletry with you, you don't want to carry it with you. Gonna be enough space because I have all time oh. fighting. Oh, there's, time and space. Uh, there's a ton. My there's, tree. there's a ton yeah, of space. There's a ton of space. Like in this. this folding bag, like if we put it. Yeah, in yeah I don't have one. Like there's there. a ton, ton of space. Yeah. 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 You know, I like to show what the possibilities are. So, um, here's my information. On your way out, I have a gift for you. My card is in the gift. If you would like to email me and get copies of the slides, I'm happy to email them. If you think of questions 10 days from now, ask away, I'll do my best. I have, um, a, I have a question yeah. about men for their jacket. If, yes. if we have to go to an event, if you, yes. want, you want to have a suit. Yes, so, so a jacket. Yeah, you want to try to pack it 
as square as possible. It should be the last thing on top. I'm a small person, so this is a little jacket, right? A big guy is gonna have a bigger thing. You want the least amount of creases as possible, square to the shoulders. But they should wear one. Have them wear, wear the blazer on the plane. I know it sounds crazy. And if you didn't want to sit in it for hours on the plane, the flight attendant will hang it up for you while you're flying. And it will stay. So that, that would be my best suggestion. There's a suitcase for a suit. Yes, folds. Folds within. I know, but Yeah. If you're traveling by car, all of this is great. You can just have all of your hanging in your car, right? Yeah. Um, my daughters who go back and forth between college and home, they use trash bags. They take a whole bunch of hanging and they put the trash bag over it and they get to their apartment, they put it up and they just pull the trash bag off. Yeah, this is by car. Because they're well, traveling by car. Yeah. That's what she yes. said, she said yes, by sir. car. You can bring a travel you question? No. no. Okay. I was just oh. amazed. I don't fully understand the trash bag. Right. How do they use it? They over their suitcase? They put a hole. Or the hangers. Yeah. So yes. if you oh. have, if this is the hanger, they poke a hole in the bottom of the trash bag. And then the open part of the trash bag is at the bottom where the drawstring is. Mm -hmm. And they use that as a garment bag a garment almost. Bag for like 10 items at a time. Yeah, I do that all the time. And what's great about that is the freeze on the trash bags makes their clothes all fresh. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. It's true. So anyway, I thank you all. Thank you. If you go that cruise, can you hold it things to the wall or no? You don't allow it? Yeah, you can with a magnet. Has to be a, you have to bring a magnet hook. What do you have to bring? A hook that has a magnet. Oh, a hook. Something that goes dollar like store. Seals? No, it's a magnet. A round magnet. And that's you purchase in it. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Dollar store. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Is that on the little jewelry case? I couldn't find it on Amazon.